What's going on, everybody? The only reason why you're seeing my face is because I want to show off my work coveralls. My wife got made for me. Got that Darius Bills embroidered in that thing right there. Thing look good. But other than that, y'all wouldn't be seeing me. But today we are going to be working on, of course, the Mazda 6 once again. <sighs> be honest with you, I don't feel like working on it. I don't feel like working at all. It is 536. I should have started working on this five and a half hours ago. I do not want to work on it. Sometimes it gets like that where you need to do stuff. You just don't want to. I honestly don't want to, but I need to because I need my car to function as it should. And quite frankly, I ain't gonna pay, ain't gonna pay nobody else to do it. So a lot of work need to be done, but today we're going to be doing three things. We are going to be changing out the driver side axle. This is a GSP axle off of eBay. Uh, I'm also going to be changing the oil with some Vaveline high mileage uh, 5W20 in the K&N filter. And I'm also going to be doing a draining feel on the transmission. Uh, I'm using AC Delco uh, Dextron. And then when you mix that with the lube guard, it brings it up to the Mazda spec transmission fluid. Uh, this is not going to be so much of a how-to because I have videos on changing drivers side axle. I think I have two actually. I got one on my car and one on, on Orlando's car. I have a video of doing the transmission fluid and I have like two videos of doing the oil change. So this is going to be a time lapse. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, other than that, let's get to it because to be honest with you, I don't want to. <clears throat> So no transmission fluid this video, no transmission fluid change this video. Uh, I don't have enough loop guard. So it takes one ounce per quart and only have like two and a half ounces. So it'll be two and a half quarts. Last time I did the transmission, uh, it was about six quarts. So I don't have six ounces. So we're gonna scratch that. So this video you are going to get uh, me switching out the Godspeed adjustable camber arms back for the stock uh, camber arms because I think the one of these is froze up and Streamline Performance in Concord, North Carolina could not get it to loosen up so I'm just going to take them out and put the factories uh, because with the BMW Style 95s 
they are 19 by 10 plus 25 so i actually need the extra camber to run those wheels because they are wide and the offset is a tad bit aggressive for this car anyway uh so with the guide speeds i have them where it's at like zero negative one camber and with the bmw style nine fives i need the negative two negative three camber and then even then it's still tight and before i ran 235 35 19s and now i'm going to be running 245 45 19 so that's even more space that i do not have for clearance so let's get to dropping this up frame which is not all that fun <laughs> The alignment shop did tell me that my Kimbo arms were frozen, which is half truth. So to adjust them on the car, you have to take the rear, the rear wheel off anyway. Uh, so this inner adjustment on my passenger side one is locked up, but the outer adjustment is not locked up. So I'm going to adjust the outer adjustment on both of them, uh, try to get them as close as possible. And then when we get the nine fives back, I will put them on the car, cycle the suspension, make sure that everything clears for the most part. And then they will just have to maybe do some final adjustments and then uh, do the tow. And then I'll be back to flipping tires every two months probably. It's been nice not having to do anything tire wise for like a year, but I'm about to go from zero camber to back to like negative three or four, which you know it's gonna suck for me but whatever all right so let me get these tires let me do the, the camber arms because i can't put the fat little ones back in and let's get this bucket up and if streamline performance can get me in today i will drive an hour today to concord to get an alignment because the guy in apex can't do it so i'm just whatever so if you get me in tomorrow, they're gonna mess up my plans because I'm trying to go work on the new project car. But I only can do what I can do. So I'll be back. We are back. Let's get the driver side camber arm out. Let's get it adjusted to the same as the passenger side. And let's get them thrown back on. Um, my guy at Streamline Performance in Concord said so he get me in today. Currently, it is 10.30. I need to be trying to leave here by 12 to get there by 1 because he closes at 3. So, I should have been up two hours ago. Let's get to it.
all right y'all it is 11 30 and i believe that i've done everything back here i adjusted the got the whack ass godspeed uh, rear camber arms back to factory specs i ran the nine fives with the factory camber arms so this should be fine i got the subframe bolts tightened up i got my airlift 3h rod height sensors reconnected inside camber bolts connected spindle camber bolts connected uh my airlift airbag bolts are tightened so i mean everything should be the way it was before i started except just a little bit more camber on the guys be camber arms i think i tightened everything up that i need to uh it is 11 30. i need to go to rad performance pick up uh my wheels had to get two new front tires because the belts were broken inside of them and of the camber wear uh they just transferred over the rear tires so let me go pick those up get these mounted up because i really need to be leaving around like 12 o'clock in about 30 minutes so about 12 30 to head to streamline performance get my alignment because he closed at three o'clock if i leave here at 12 30 i'll be there by about 1 40 ish so let's get the wisdom tires uh get them on adjust the right height a little bit go a little bit lower and let's get this alignment got the nine fives with tires on them Ugh. like i said front tires had to get two new tires and then the back the rear tires were just switched over so let's get them out and let's make sure that i have the correct hub centric rings for my wheels Oh, well these still have the hub digit rings in it, so I ain't gotta worry about it. So let's get these mounted up. Wheels are on. Hopefully everything is tight and like it's supposed to be. Cause I'm about to make a hour and some odd ride to Concord. Uh, it looked like the alignment might be about all right uh didn't have time to test it it is currently 12 17 and i really need to be on the road by like uh i can't get my jack under there but i need to be on the road so i don't really have time to do any adjustments so what i need to do now before i forget is that i need to air the car up because otherwise i won't be able to get the jack up under it so i'm gonna put it to about 100 on all four corners get this car on the ground I might reset the ride height a little bit lower and uh right on down to Concord get this alignment from streamline performance it's only 62 degrees I've been sweating all morning I've been moving so let's get this thing down and let's get it out and on the road All right, so I'm on my way to Streamline Performance. Uh, I did lower the car about half an inch. So a little bit more aggressive stance. But yeah, I, it is 12.31. I should have been leaving a minute ago. I need to torque these wheels down. All right, y'all. We are on our way to Streamline Performance in Concord, North Carolina to get my alignment done. Uh, he closes at 3. It is 12.42. 
my ETA is two o'clock. He shouldn't have too much to do alignment wise. Uh, the camera adjustment and the tow adjustment on the front is pretty easy. Uh, the camber in the rear should be about even. He just needs to adjust the tow and we should be pretty much good to go. So hopefully it won't take that long. What is that sound? Hopefully it won't take that long and I'll let y'all back in when I get there. Back on when I get there, back in. I'm tired. See y'all when I get there. All right, we're pulling up the streamline. Get this Mazda aligned. Might have to raise the ride height just a tad. But we're gonna see what he says. So I'm gonna let my man do what he do because that's what he does. Try not to hit this Subaru. All right, I'll be back with my car on the rack. I am back in the car it is 340 leaving Concord so I'm gonna get on the highway and try to beat a lot of this traffic and we're gonna see how it rides but uh, my engine tray cover is just blown apart so I need, oh crap so I need to probably just take it off or cut off the bad part uh, because it is scraping because I'm about half an inch lower than what I was so I need to take that off. I think it is scraping, scraping, scraping. Maybe the fall off my way home. We're gonna find out. So I'll see y'all in about hour 15. We are back and I think my under tray is dragging. Oh, actually, I think the under tray ripped off. All right, no more under tray, but I see something wet and I don't think my axle is all the way seated. Uh, so let me check on that because I'm not trying to have any transmission fluid. I'm not trying to tear my transmission up by lacking on transmission fluid. All right, let's see what's going on up under here. Like I said, it is definitely wet. And... I'm not sure. See how wet that is? This looks like oil. Yeah, it smells like transmission fluid. So that's not good. But the part that was dragging the ground of my under tray is gone. But yeah, it just kind of sucks that I think there's a transmission fluid because, oh yeah, it's all under the car. Oh crap. And it just sucks because I just did my alignment and that means I have to pull the damn axle back out because of that stupid C-clip. Alright, let me see if I can see what's going on. Huh. So for right now, that axle issue is going to be something for another day. Uh, I could hear like this metal on metal chatter noise. Uh... So I definitely do need to fix it sometime soon. It just, it's not gonna be today. Maybe tomorrow, maybe tonight, but not today. <sighs> Wet farts. So 
yeah i'm gonna end the video here i do need to go and cut a piece of my inner fender plastics because i think that's what i'm hearing what i'm turning is this just flapping on the tire it's supposed to go all the way down and i think when i hit that tire on the highway they ripped it off it's supposed to look like that but instead all of this support is missing so i'm going to cut this off and then end the video there so like everything that you do think build enjoy peace if you're in north carolina somewhere close to concord and you need a shop to do your alignments streamline performance is the place to go peace I definitely need to buy a, another inner fender because at this point it is all but gone. It should come down there, connect here, go to there and around there, and it is all gone. <sighs> I gotta find time to work on that axle. <sighs> this is what I cut out and it's getting thrown away. So maybe I'll go buy some inner liners. Maybe not. Let's get her off and let's air out. I ain't seen much look aired out. So this is the first look for all of us well now of course you know it was back before on these wheels but it's sitting a lot better now with a little bit more camber back here it's still tight but it's fitting better than what it did before it would like pop the fender when it aired out it has been self clearing a little bit so that's good The front fit good, got a little bit more room on the front. But yeah, I think this is gonna be on here for a while. So, you know, got a little bit of tuck right here. So, I dig it. So this is where we're gonna be for a while. I kept the wedge for two years. I can't remember how long I ran these the first time I had them on here maybe about two years ago but he's gonna be here for a while uh, the wheels will probably change colors next year when it warms up uh, but for right now I'm just gonna run my splatter paint that I did so got some camera going on but you know we will we will flip tires as needed so Peace.